Hello, my name is Dr. Gerard Toll, and this is the video introduction to my course, a Discourse Analysis, which is GIA Political Science UAP 5504, which is offered in the fall of 2019. So this, in this video introduction, what I want to do is briefly go over the syllabus with you. This is a completely online class. Um, but it is a class which has a series of uh, video lectures just like this uh, throughout it to uh, make the material um, clearer to you, to explain it, uh, to give you a sense of what it is that I want you to get from this course. Now the idea of discourse is one that has um, been central to contemporary social science for this last three decades and more. Um, it has shaped um, how social science uh, conceptualizes its object uh, and how uh, social scientists uh, do research. Um, it is associated with uh, schools of thought like both structuralism, feminism, constructivism, identity politics, critical political theory. Um, and I'm also going to emphasize uh, more um, recent uh, developments, affect theory, although it's got a long history, but it has uh, really been very influential in uh, this last decade in uh, polit in political science, politics, uh, geography, and uh, social science writ large. Um, and then I'm also going to emphasize the uh, contemporary, uh, and particularly the contemporary challenges that have been brought about by um, social media uh, and uh, the particular world that we live in, particularly the political world. Um, now, uh, this is a, a, a course which is um, organized into five different modules. Um, and we have our own uh, course syllabus. So this is our course syllabus in Canvas, and this is what you will use to uh, help you uh, throughout the course. Um, so let me go through very briefly a, f a bit about the, the syllabus and how I put the, together uh, the course. Um, discourse analysis is not one particular method. It is a, a particular approach, and it's really a, a suite of approaches. It's a heterogeneous set of traditions, actually, uh, of literatures which grapple with the question of representation and, and indeed, non-representation, uh, questions of meaning, interpretation, uh, affect, and uh, communication, uh, whether it is visual, uh, whether it is uh, in terms of how someone presents themselves uh, and how they appear bodily. Um, uh, um, as much as what it is that they say. So uh, what I do is I uh, describe in the um, syllabus some particular myths um, that uh, adhere to the idea of discourse. Um, so uh, what I want you to be very clear about at the outset is what it is that we're getting into in this particular course. Now the course is organized around uh, five different modules. You will write uh, five different assignments uh, for me, 1500 word assignments, which you will submit through Canvas. Uh, the course is an intensive reading uh, course. You're expected to read about the equivalent of a small to medium sized book per week, or five or six articles. Uh, so in other words, you should think about this as uh, the type of work you would do in a graduate seminar, which is three hours, and then all the reading that you would do for that seminar. So the three hours will be devoted to um, the actual online content that I will provide you, uh, but then you have to do the reading and the uh, texts that are assigned. So uh, in 2019, uh, what I've done is I have assigned um, six uh, different texts. Um, actually, the one text here by Haworth uh, is available as a PDF, and one book that is not here is The uh, Merchants of Doubt. But these are the texts that I'm using, and so let me describe them. Uh, so first of all, we're going to uh, look at um, the issue of uh, network propaganda uh, and use this particular uh, book, which came out from Oxford last year, uh, which deals really with uh, the U.S. and U.S. politics uh, and the particular discourses that uh, characterize U.S. politics. 
Uh, we're also going to um, uh, read this book, which is also is very new, uh, which is um, Russell Muirhead and Nancy Rosenblum's book. A lot of people are saying on conspiracist thinking and conspiracy theories. Now, those are um, relatively new parts of the course. They are the final module in which I will address the contemporary uh, sets of questions. Before that, you will deal with um, texts which I have used uh, down the years uh, in this course. Um, and I have had two really core texts. Howard's te text, which is now uh, no longer available, although you may be able to pick up a copy uh, used somewhere. Um, but I have uh, provided uh, uh, PDFs of the chapters in it. Now, this is a challenging, difficult read. It represents the Essex School of uh, Discourse Analysis, um, uh, but it is really well worth uh, reading and repairs reading. Uh, a more introductory book is Sarah Mill's book. It's now uh, somewhat dated. She hasn't uh, given us a third edition of it, but it's still a very, very useful uh, a Routledge book from 2004. Um, and then the other books are um, uh, books which uh, are specific to particular topics, uh, such as emotional diplomacy is sort of illustrating affect and uh, discourse, and it's this book by Todd Hall. Um, and uh, I've mentioned um, Oreskes and Conway's book, Merchants of Doubt, uh, which I, uh, I wanted to assign because it is one that deals with issues that are still very, very relevant to us. And in fact, the, the value of that book is in part to underscore that the issues that we're dealing with in the contemporary particular period about uh, fake news, about disinformation, uh, about uh, conspiracy theories and the like are long-standing ones uh, that have been part of uh, American political life and indeed globalization and the uh, world that we live in. Um, for quite a while, and in part, the challenges that we face right now, particularly the global environmental challenge uh, with climate change, is uh, related to um, these kind of strategies, corporate strategies of um, sowing doubt over um, scientific truth. Now, the most difficult book is undoubtedly Margaret Wetherill's book, uh, Affect and Emotion. I provide you with a really detailed discussion of the four chapters that I'm going to use in this book. I, I have continued to use it because I think it is a very valuable introduction to a set of literatures that you need to know about uh, and which are very influential in contemporary uh, social science, uh, dealing with affect uh, and the like. Now, there are lots of other uh, readings in the um, uh, course, uh, but these are available as uh, files for you online in Canvas. So, how is your grade determined? Well, five written assignments. Each module uh, has an assignment associated with it, and each assignment will be graded. Uh, and the grade that you get, a letter grade, will be 20% uh, of your grade. What this means is that I'm actually not grading online discussion. You will be able to uh, discuss um, the course content. If you go to the um, Canvas page, you will see that there are there's room for discussions. Uh, and that's uh, up to you as to how you want to use those uh, discussion modules or that kind of feature. It's, uh, you're able to discuss things uh, with your classmates there. You can uh, introduce yourself at the outset, uh, but that's not graded. And so therefore, there's no obligation to do that. Although if it is a case that I am sometimes, especially at the end of the course, um, uh, having a difficult time determining what precise grade category you fall into, I will sometimes uh, consult that. Um, but um, uh, uh, ostensibly, that's really just a resource for you to, um, to allow you to ask questions of your classmates. I will occasionally, uh, if there's a particular question that seems to be puzzling a lot of people, I will come in and uh, make some uh, clarificatory uh, remarks on it. But it's really more for students, uh, that uh, discussion feature.
Um, the assignments, I provide lots of detail on the assignments. Uh, I have high expectations as to how people uh, should complete these assignments. They should be written. I will provide feedback on these. Uh, please understand that the feedback process is one that is designed to um, improve your writing, uh, designed to improve your clarity of thought and, uh, and to make it clear to you where it is there are certain problems in your writing. This is not personal. This is not uh, in any way uh, negative. It is feedback designed to uh, um, force you to um, become better. Uh, at writing and uh, at expressing your ideas. That's the value of the course. That's what students uh, in the past have got out of the course. Um, and that is something that is uh, important. But of course, some students will on occasion find that uh, uh, or choose to interpret what I'm saying in personalized ways. That is, I don't know you personally, and I, all I know is your work. And so uh, it is important that you uh, make a s clear distinction between the work that you're doing uh, and you personally. Uh, okay, so um, this is the, uh, how the course is put together. So uh, it's going to begin quite fast uh, with a module on foundational thinkers and traditions in discourse. This is just some of the foundations uh, of uh, discourse analysis, but uh, we're covering um, some of the more important ones here. There are others. Um, and uh, so I have audio uh, lectures available for this to explain it to you. Um, and uh, to uh, guide you through this first three weeks. First assignment is due on the 13th of September, a Friday. The assignments are always due on a Friday at 9 a.m. So do not be late. If you are late, you will suffer a grade penalty. It's very clear uh, in the syllabus about that. And of course, the Canvas system tells me precisely uh, whether you are on time or late. Uh, and I do give grade penalties for that because there's one thing, there's two aspects of the course that are important for you in terms of uh, professionalizing uh, your work. One is that uh, you write to the deadline uh, in terms of the precise 1500 word limit. If you're over 1500 words, you're writing too much. If you're under 1450, you're writing too little. Um, and then secondly, that you get your work in on time. This is the types of things that you're going to have to do in the workplace anyway. Uh, this is uh, a good training for you in that respect. So um, after the first module, we're going to deal with um, the a question of political economy, power and truth. And uh, what I'm doing here is somewhat unusual in that I'm providing you with two weeks of an introduction to the Marxist tradition, uh, thinking about uh, discourse and representation. And then I'm going to give you a text, uh, Merchants of Doubt, which you have to interpret and read within the context of that particular tradition. Um, and uh, I think that that is going to be a very useful exercise for you. That a second assignment is due on the 4th of October. There's three weeks between the assignments, generally. I take into consideration Thanksgiving, so the last assignment is in, act in calendar terms a month, or close to a month, uh, but that is because you have a week off in Thanksgiving, which you should have as a week off. Um, Third module deals with gendered political uh, discourses, images, and practices. And we look at the theoretical aspects of this, as well as providing uh, some readings which analyze the US case and then the Russian case. Um, and then uh, we'll deal with discourse, affect, and emotion. Uh, and this is where we will uh, deal with uh, Wetherill's book. We'll deal with Todd Hall's book. Uh, and then a series of other readings, uh, and I've thrown in one of my own readings from uh, quite a few years ago um, on this uh, to try to give you some sense of as to how I have used it in, in my past work. And those of you who are familiar with my work will know that I have uh, uh, talked about affect quite a bit in, in my research and, and writings. The last uh, section is the uh, one that really addresses contemporary issues. Uh, inevitably, it is political in that um, 
It addresses the contemporary moment in uh, US uh, politics. Um, this is um, unfortunate in that it is political. Uh, the conclusions that uh, are, are drawn by uh, these, by Bankler, Farris and Roberts, for example, um, is political only in as much as empirically this is what we see uh, when we uh, document the uh, ways in which uh, propaganda, conspiracy theories, uh, and fake news and, and the like are circulated and weaponized uh, in contemporary American politics. I do not need to uh, underscore this. You just need to look at the Washington Post uh, or the uh, New York Times and articles about um, uh, discourses concerning invasion, uh, discourses concerning, uh, you know, conspiracies that are uh, throughout our um, uh, political uh, discourse uh, right now. So uh, we're going to examine uh, those. We're going to examine the literature that uh, seeks to make sense of it, to provide you with some kind of analytical tools to understand the contemporary moment. Okay, so that is the course, the 2019 version of this course. I look forward to reading your work. Uh, I hope that you enjoy the course. Please uh, uh, keep in mind that I will try to um, grade as quickly as I can uh, but sometimes uh, I will not be able to do it uh, over the weekend. So if your work arrives on Friday morning, uh, I will try to have the uh, material to you, hopefully by Monday and Tuesday, but sometimes it may run into Wednesday. Certainly if there's any kind of issues, if I'm traveling or something like that, I will indicate that to you. Um, and uh, please feel free to email me if there is a precise issue that you are having difficulty with. If it's a course-related conceptual issue, please ask that using the discussion feature of Canvas so that you can have uh, the feedback from other students in the class and that my intervention can be seen by others. Uh, uh, this is uh, very, very important so that everything is transparent and clear to, to everyone. If you're having difficulty with something, generally the chances are someone else is having difficulty with it or someone can certainly provide you with um, you know, perspective and insight uh, on that particular topic. Okay, so let me finish there. I welcome to a, a Discourse Analysis Fall 2019 at Virginia Tech and uh, I hope you all have a very positive and uh, worthwhile semester.